Okay, so now we go to section 36. It's all about items not deductible. As a general rule, no deduction shall in any case be allowed in respect to what? Personal, living, or family expenses. Any amount paid out for new buildings or for permanent improvements or betterments made to increase the value of any property or estate. The subsections are not applied to intangible drilling and development costs incurred in petroleum operations which are deductible. You just read this and you just familiarize yourselves with this. And this one, premiums paid on any life insurance policy covering the life of any officer or employee or of any person financially interested in any trade or business carried on by the taxpayer, individual or corporate, when the taxpayer is directly or indirectly a beneficiary under such policy. You can't claim... Uh, for a deduction on that, okay? You also have these losses from sales or exchanges of property. There's no, you can't, because these items are not deductible, okay? So losses from what? Between members of family, the, the related parties, okay? This, uh, if you remember the interest, you cannot claim interest, you cannot claim or you cannot Recognize bad debts for related parties, transactions. So just read this. You also have this, well, the special provisions regarding income and deductions of insurance companies, whether domestic or foreign. You just read this class and understand the provisions herein. And, uh, well, I hope, well, I, I don't know, I haven't encountered any jurisprudence yet. But uh, there, there might be, but this is one of the ins inconspicuous provisions of the NARC. Uh, you have these losses from wash sales of stock or securities. You also read this and understand this. Capital gains and losses, you remember the definition of what a capital asset is. So this is the definition by exclusion. The term capital asset means held by the taxpayer but it does not include stock in trade or of the tax the the products or the things that you normally sell in the ordinary course of your business that's your capital asset the net capital gain and net capital loss well it, there in, in a taxable year you say for example you sell your one of your vehicle and you gain on it and then you have this you you sold your like typewriter or whatever then there's this loss. So if there's gain or loss, you recognize that and whatever that is the remainder of that is either a gain or a loss. And that you should report that. It's just the offsetting of the gain of the or losses. Okay. This means the excess of gains from sales or exchanges of capital assets over the losses from such sales or exchanges. So this is for the taxable year. And this is included in your what? Gross income. Okay. This is different, okay. Capital gains is the, well, for real property, there is this presumed gain, okay? And there, you remember section 24, uh, the capital gains on the sale of real property. But for other capital assets, this is how you treat the capital assets. Whenever you sell that, it's either you recognize gain or losses. And the percentage, you take that into account 100% if the capital asset has been held for more than 12 months. 50% if the capital asset has been held for more than 12 months. For not more than 12 months over the first. So for capital gains or losses. So in the case of taxpayer other than a corporation, this is just for individuals. Okay? Only the following percentages of the gain or losses recognized upon the sale or exchange of a capital asset shall be taken into account in computing net capital gain, net capital loss, and net income. So remember, for if you hold or you held the capital asset not for more for not more than twelve months, then you may recognize one hundred percent gain or one hundred percent loss. And if you held that for more than twelve months, then only fifty percent. Limitation, you just. Uh, uh, yeah, read that. And there is this also net capital loss carryover. This is also different from the net loss carryover. This is net capital loss. 
This means that if any taxpayer other than a corporation sustains in any taxable year a net capital loss, such loss in an amount not in excess of the net income for such year shall be treated in the succeeding taxable year as a loss from the sale or exchange of capital asset held for not more than 12 months. Okay, this is the... Well, you can appreciate this provision if we will go into the computation of it, but we will not. You are not expected to compute. Retirement of bonds. You remember this is under items or special provisions. Well, not the capital gains and losses. Okay. Retirement of bonds. Where is that? This one. For purposes of this title, you just read this. Certificate of issued by any corporation with interest of funds shall be considered as amounts received in exchange, therefore. Okay, but uh, what I want to discuss is section 40, but we'll, we'll have that on a separate module because I think this is kind of a lengthy provision. And uh, yeah, there's this case. So that's about it for sections 36, 37, and 39. You just take note of paragraph B as to the holding period. Okay?